Mao Zedong, also pronounced Mao Zedong, was the most impactful Chinese leader in history. His ruthless approach to establishing his brand of communism saw perhaps 20 million people or more killed from the 1920s to 1940s during famines, civil war, and persecution. From 1958 to 1969 alone, it is estimated that over 70 million more people were tortured, executed, placed in gulags, or intentionally starved to death under the great communist leader, Chairman Mao. Why did he follow a path that was so self-destructive for his country? What is his legacy as a leader and communist icon? What do we see occurring in China today that may harken back to the dark ages of Mao's reign of terror? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author. And we will answer these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. Mao Zedong was born on 26 December 1893 in Shaoshan Village, Hunan Province, the son of a wealthy peasant farmer, Mao Yicheng. And he and his two brothers, Zimin and Zitan, had a comparatively excellent education. At age eight, Mao was sent to Shaoshan Primary School. In 1911, Mao began middle school in Changsha and at 16 attended the higher primary school in nearby Dongshan Province which was high school. Mao also became a Buddhist like his mother, Wen Qi Mei, but later became a devoted follower of communism and Leninist Marxist teachings from his early days. During this time, revolutionary winds were already blowing against Emperor Pu Yi and the Manchu dynasty, as Sun Yat-sen, an American-educated Christian, led the Tongmingui society, striving for a republican form of government, which Mao supported. Mao and many others felt that the monarchy was authoritarian and did not care about the people, that they collaborated with the European powers and the Japanese who occupied Chinese soil, hence the rebellion from many sectors of society. As a result of the mass movement by several political factions, the monarchy was abolished, creating the Republic of China. But as a consolation, the monarchist Yuan Shike became president. As a boy, Mao was very well read and interested in history, and he was inspired by military leaders and their campaigns. He studied Napoleon Bonaparte, George Washington, and American Civil War generals, as well as the Art of War by Sun Tzu. He saw that these men struggled and fought for what they believed in, whether to create a new nation or fighting to, to preserve one in turmoil, which inspired him. By the time he entered Peking University, he had studied politics and philosophy, such as Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations and Montesquieu's The Spirit of the Laws, as well as the works of Western scientists and philosophers. Mao believed that centralized government control would be better for the people than a free market that created competition, where the worker was at a disadvantage and disposable to those who controlled industry. He also studied men such as Charles Darwin, Immanuel Kant, John Locke, John Stuart Mill, and other influential thinkers. It is known that he kept a copy of Niccolo Machiavelli's The Prince and the Discourses as a reference guide. Mao also studied the American military campaigns in the West during the Indian Wars, as he saw the defiant nature of the American Indian tribes inspiring. These may have influenced his mindset as he later became a light infantry and guerrilla leader. Mao, like most Chinese, were very upset that Japan had been given Germany's former colony in China. Confirmed in the Treaty of Versailles, as Japan had been a member of the Allies in World War I, unrest was rising in the country at Japan's partial occupation, which began in 1919. After graduation, Mao had begun teaching history at the Zhuyi Primary School and was instrumental in organizing protest against the pro-Duan governor of Hunan province, Zheng Jingyao, who earned the nickname Zhang the Venomous, due to his corrupt government and violent rule against dissenters. Mao also delved deeply into the writings of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, keeping a copy of the Communist Manifesto. This would later become his Bible, as he developed his own thoughts and philosophies. He firmly believed in the concept of universal wealth and land distribution, so that no one would be wealthy at the expense of others who would be left in poverty. 
His military strategies and political policies and theories are collectively known as Maoism. Mao was also influenced by one of his old teachers, Yi Pei Ji, a revolutionary and member of the Kuomintang, or KMT, which Mao joined. The KMT wanted a China free of Japanese influence and occupation and modeled on the Western capitalist paradigm with free markets, industrialization, and free trade. The wealthy landowners were the primary members of the KMT, which Mao found to be anathema to his communist concepts of shared land and shared wealth. This division would be the catalyst for the break between the two factions. When party leader Sun Yat-sen died in May 1925, he was succeeded by Chiang Kai-shek, who moved to distance the KMT nationalists from Mao's communists. Mao had initially supported Chiang's National Revolutionary Army, whom he saw as a potential ally against the Japanese. As Chiang launched the Northern Expedition attack on the warlords in 1926, who Mao had also been fighting, Spurred on by this expedition, many peasants supported Mao and rose up and confiscated the land of the wealthy landowners who supported the KMT and who were often killed. These actions further alienated the KMT nationalists from the communists. Many KMT members were landowners and were not on board with communist land redistribution. In 1927, Mao supported the communist separation from the capitalist-oriented KMT and he moved to have Chiang removed from power. Mao advocated for the death penalty or life imprisonment for anyone found guilty of counter-revolutionary activity, such as resisting land redistribution, arguing that in a revolutionary situation, peaceful methods cannot suffice. This land confiscation and redistribution disaster finally severed relations. During the Chinese Civil War between the KMT and the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, Mao founded the Chinese Workers and Peasants Red Army. During 1927, Chiang marched on the communist stronghold of Shanghai and unleashed the Green Gang, a notorious criminal organization who murdered at will, killing up to 25,000 pro-communist Chinese. This was when the Red Army was created and Mao became an important commander. Mao proclaimed that, even the lame, the deaf, and the blind could all come in useful for the revolutionary struggle, and he increased the army's numbers. Mao had openly called Chiang a puppet of the imperialists and a slave to the capitalists and branded him an anti-revolutionary, which was a correct assessment. He incorporated two groups of bandits into his army, numbering an additional 1,800 soldiers. He had laid down rules for his soldiers, prompt obedience to orders. All confiscations were to be turned over to the government, and nothing was to be confiscated from poorer peasants. In doing so, he created a very well-disciplined and efficient fighting force. Mao joined the forces with two leaders, General Zhu Dei and Lin Biao, whose army had almost been wiped out. But Zhu and Mao disagreed on the strategy they should take. Stalin had taken a great interest and supported Mao and called Zhu to Moscow in 1929, leaving Mao in charge. Part of what helped form Mao's hatred for anything non-communist was when in November, his second wife, Yang Kuyi, and sister were captured and beheaded by KMT General He Jian. Some believe it was ordered by Chiang. During the Japanese occupation of China in the 1930s, Mao's communists were far more effective and reliable in fighting the Japanese forces than was the nationalist Kuomintang army under Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek. Mao led the Red Army of the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, the forerunner of the People's Liberation Army, to evade the pursuit of the National Army of the Chinese Nationalist Party, the Kuomintang. The long march by Mao to escape the Nationalists under Chiang lasted from 1934 to 1935, which reportedly covered over 5,600 miles in just over 13 months. The march was ill-conceived and not well thought out. It started out with about 100,000 people, but less than 8,000 arrived at the end through death from hunger, combat, and exposure. While on the long march, Mao's wife, He Zizin, had been injured by a shrapnel wound to the head. She traveled to Moscow for medical treatment, and Mao proceeded to divorce her and marry an actress, Zhang King. Zizin was thrown into a Russian insane asylum. After the massive Japanese invasion of the rest of China in 1937, Mao's forces functioned as guerrilla units, operating in small units and using hit-and-run tactics, unlike the Chinese nationalists who later fought as a conventional force alongside American and British Commonwealth forces. Mao knew that without the KMT, he would not be able to defeat the Japanese. 
so he sent a peace offering for an alliance with Chiang, who initially refused. But after Chiang was detained by his own KMT leadership, there was the formation of the United Front, which Stalin strongly endorsed. This alliance was a smart move, because after the destruction of Shanghai and Nanking by the Japanese, the numbers within the army soared beyond 400,000 soldiers, and their counteroffensive killed over 20,000 Japanese soldiers. Once World War II became global in 1939, and Japan began to invade all of Asia and the Southwest Pacific, Allied commanders knew that Chiang viewed the Communists as a greater threat than the Japanese. Trying to get Chiang reined in to fight the Japanese and not the Communists proved to be a difficult task. However, Mao's forces also fought the Kuomintang in an ongoing civil war, only interrupted by Allied intervention to keep both parties focused upon fighting the Japanese. Chiang's response was, The Japanese will be gone, but the Communists will still be here to justify his use of Allied supplied weapons against Mao and not supporting the war against Japan. U.S. forces met with Mao and the Communists as part of the Dixie Mission, who reported back to General Stilwell that the Communists were better organized, more determined, and definitely more effective at fighting the Japanese than the Nationalist KMT under Chiang. However, because the KMT was anti-Communist, American military aid went to Chiang at the expense of the Communists and Mao who were supported by Stalin in a limited way. After World War II, the Civil War continued, and the Communist forces fighting the Nationalist government under Chiang, after the Nationalists lost the struggle due to great support from Mao, from Stalin, they were forced to flee to Formosa, later renamed Taiwan. Chiang moved the government to Taipei, Taiwan, where he resumed his duties as President of the Republic of China on 1 March 1950. This was the birth of what became known as the Republic of China, juxtaposed to the Communist People's Republic of China. Mao was now the total ruler of one-fifth of the world's population at that time. In 1958, Mao launched the Great Leap Forward that aimed to rapidly transform China's economy from agrarian to industrial to compete with the industrialized West, which was an avoidable disaster. Mao's attempt to rapidly catch up to the Western industrialized world was a complete failure as he confiscated farmland to build factories and used his hard currency to purchase steel and other metals to build up China's infrastructure. This forced many millions of Chinese farmers who would have been growing food to migrate to the major cities for work. Much of it they were unqualified for, thus launching another great famine, perhaps the largest in history. This ill-conceived action led to the deadliest famine in history and the deaths of up to 55 million people or more between 1958 and 1962. In 1963, Mao launched the Socialist Education Movement, banning pro-Western literature and enforcing a communist indoctrination policy. In 1966, he initiated the Cultural Revolution, a program to remove counter-revolutionary elements in Chinese society which lasted 10 years and was marked by violent class struggle, widespread destruction of cultural artifacts, and a clear demonstration of Mao's mental illness and rising cult of personality. Between 1959 and 1969, he was the chairman of the Chinese Communist Party with undisputed authority. His long-term plan was to export his brand of communism all over the world, hence his various adventures. As part of his plan, China was also heavily involved with other Southeast Asian conflicts, such as the Korean War, where he sent 300,000 soldiers across the Yalu River to support the North Korean communist leader Kim Il-sung. He supported Ho Chi Minh during the Vietnam War, where he gave sanctuary to North Vietnamese aircraft evading American fighters, and the Cambodian Civil War, which brought Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge to power. The government under Mao was responsible for vast numbers of deaths, with estimates ranging from 40 to 80 million victims through starvation, persecution, prison labor, and mass executions, not including the deaths prior to 1959, which estimates have as between 30 and 40 million due to starvation and purges. Mao ruthlessly suppressed his people by force, including executions and placing them in gulags. He unnecessarily caused the deaths of tens of millions through his mismanagement and lack of understanding as to how to convert an agrarian economy into an industrial one. He also threatened to retake Taiwan by force, but never had the capability. He also strived to expand his brand of communism around the world, where we see China's influence even today. Sound familiar? He has been praised in some communist circles for transforming China from an agrarian third world backwater into a leading world power. 
The claims are that he greatly advanced literacy, women's rights, basic health care, primary education, and life expectancy. These successes are always in dispute. His own publication, The Little Red Book, contains his thoughts and philosophies and was required reading in China and is still popular today. The results of Mao's reign included murder, torture, the creation of the gulag system, which still exists, and several famines that killed so many Chinese that the numbers are still in dispute. Mao may have personally been responsible for up to 100 million deaths, and that is his greatest legacy. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Please click like and subscribe for free, and please stay tuned and be engaged and informed. Send us comments if you have questions or even show ideas, and we will respond to all requests and comments as soon as we can. Thank you.